Hi and welcome to my video series of Mobile Explained in 3 minutes where I explain a concept of Mobile in less than 3 minutes or so. Now these videos are not so detailed but it has all the necessary information to save your ass before the day of your exam. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel hit that subscribe button and stay tuned till the end of this video. And in this installment we'll talk about the cosmids which are modified plasmids and their cloning vectors. Of course they are better than the plasmids and in this video we would understand how they are better than the plasmids. If we break down the name, cosmids equal to cos plus plasmid. The cos came from the cos sides in the lambda fudge vector, and the plasmid is just the normal plasmid, the cloning vector. Now, let's understand the fudge biology first to understand the cosmids and how they are developed. We all know that bacteriophage can infect bacteria with high efficiency. And if we look at the genome of these bacteriophage, they are DNA. And there are like several genes in these uh, fat genome, but the end of these fat genome are extremely sticky, and these are called cohesive sites or cos sites. Now, these cos sites help the fudge to package inside its head, but these cos sites has another function as well. When the fudge infect the bacteria and injects its genetic material inside the bacteria, these Cohesive ends ensures that they circularize properly inside the bacteria. This circularization has its own advantage. This circularization, which happens due to the cos side, brings the at P and at B sides close to each other, which help them to recombine in a side directed re recombination manner and help them to get integrated into the FUD genome, into the bacterial genome. Now, if these cos sites are 50 kilobase pairs away then they could be efficiently packaged inside the fudge head but if the distance between two cos sites are less than 50 kilobase pairs or less than 30 kilobase pairs then no packing take place now let's just look at a little bit about the basic feature of the cosmid vectors now these cosmid vectors are modified plasmids and their carrying capacity range from 37 to 52 kilobase pairs and generally uh, average size is 45 kilobase pair. It has a multiple cloning side like any other cloning vector where there are a bunch of restriction enzymes and where you can cut the vector to insert your gene of interest. It would have a origin of replication such that it could be propagated inside the bacteria. It has the cohesive site which would allow it to get circularized inside the bacteria and Obviously, it has a resistance gene which would allow uh, selection, right? Selection of the recombinants inside a bacteria. Now, let's say we cut the cosmid vector with the restriction enzyme and then we insert our gene of interest, which is somewhere, let's say, 40 kilobase pair. Now, they would be ligated to the uh, restricted cosmid vector and this whole in this in this whole vector schema if these cos sites are somewhere 50 kilobase pair or at least 30 kilobase pair away from each other then they could be efficiently packed in the fudge uh, head so all the recombinants would get packed but if there are self ligated products or any non specific products which are smaller than the desired size then it won't be packed inside the fudge head and that's a good thing, right? Because we don't have uh, non-specific products inside the fudge. Now, when the fudge infects and injects its DNA inside the bacteria, it would eventually circularize because it has its cos sites, which are the cohesive ends, which would allow it to circularize. And if we talk about the utility of cosmids, they are mid-level carrying capacity vectors. It, they, their carrying capacity is not as less as the plasmid, but not as much as the BEC or YAK. So they can be used in several purposes, but their biggest advantage is in case of plasmid, in order to get the plasmid inside the bacteria, you have to do heat shock method transformation or any other method of transformation. Now, well, transformation works, but the efficiency is not 100%. But if you want to deliver the gene inside the bacteria and if you use cosmid type of vectors by an infection via fudge then this is very efficient and fudge almost infect every single e coli that uh, it can possibly infect 
so the process is very efficient and plaques could be easily formed from these cosmids now once inside the bacteria the cosmids can easily propagate it because it has its origin of replication antibiotic resistance gene so we can easily select that as well but there are certain disadvantages with cosmids Cosmids in a linear format is not so stable and can acquire many mutations and that's why even though it was developed in 1970s, it was later discontinued. However, initial days, the lambda replacement vectors were used to prepare the cDNA libraries, especially the lambda GT series. But later on, few of these cosmids are also used to prepare cDNA libraries. It's good to know that they were useful at that time, but now there is literally no use of these cosmid vectors, even if they are they were hypothetically superior than plasmids, but still it's not really used these days. I hope you enjoyed this video and this video was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.